his body. Mm -hmm. Now he told the disciples, he gives them this commission and he tells them, but wait, first go and wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. And they do that, right? They go to the upper room place, they wait, and they wait, and they pray, and they worship until the Holy Spirit comes upon them, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit. After they are filled with the Holy Spirit, these same guys that ran away when Jesus got arrested, that denied Jesus when people asked him questions, that were scared and doing what was cowardly, these same people stood up and boldly proclaimed Jesus, knowing they might get arrested. And these same people later were martyred yeah. horribly yeah. for speaking the gospel. So where did all this great courage come from? Where did the power to get up and talk in front of these people in the face of persecution that we've never even dealt with? The Holy Spirit sustained them. The Holy Spirit worked through them to bring healing, to cast out demons, and all of those things. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. So they had a couple of things real strong. They knew who Jesus was. I mean, they knew who Jesus was. They saw him die on that cross, and they saw him again. They knew who he was. And they had the Holy Spirit power within them. And we now, dear ones, are the body of Christ. Amen. And we are called to do the works of Jesus. And if you read in Isaiah 61, it tells you some of those things. And you know, there are lots of ways to do that. Maybe ways you're not used to. Things that you don't think of as conventional. You know, there's kind of a little churchy box that people put a lot of ministry stuff in in their minds. It's not God. He doesn't create those boxes. He's real creative. Have you noticed? I mean, really. There's like, everything he made, he made like thousands of different kinds. You know, he's super creative. He's vast in his ideas. And he's put within each of you himself. And he's deposited within each of you certain special gifts that are for you alone. They're unique to you. You're not like anybody else. That's by design. He didn't want you to be like anybody else. It's by design. And he has a certain place for you and ways for you to function that are unique to you. And that's all good. You know, you can communicate things about who God is through all sorts of ways. I mean, there's art and there's music and there's writings and there's, and they're showing up at somebody's door when they're down. There's, you know what I'm saying? There's a broad, vast, various ways that God can work through you. But first we got to be surrendered to him. You know so much of our church life has revolved around what we want. We want a nice, clean, neat little life. We want to go to heaven and we want God to bless us. And we often miss out on discovering what we're here for, mm -hmm. who God created us to be, and what our purpose is. It really isn't all about us. It really isn't. It's all about Him. And Him wanting to reach everyone mm -hmm. yes, yes. with His truth and His love. Mm -hmm. Everyone. And you know, each one of you has connections that other people in here don't have. Mm -hmm. There's people you know that other people don't know. Mm -hmm. There's strengths that you have that other people don't have. Mm -hmm. And God needs to work through you to accomplish what he wants to do in the world. He designed you, and if you're not functioning in his body, then something is missing in his body. And that handicaps what 
Jesus wants to do in the earth. Right? Amen. If you're missing something, then you're handicapped in that area. And you can't do as much. You have a limitation you wouldn't have had. But if you're a whole person, you're healthy and you got all your parts, yes. and they all work well, then there's a much greater effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are. We are the body of Christ. And we don't want anything missing. Mm -hmm. But if we make it about ourselves instead of surrendering to the Lord, and asking him to help us flow and develop and be who he called us to be, then we'll be a missing part. Yes. And there will be a lack. Because for whatever reason, God has decided he wants to be a co-laborer with us. He has decided that he wants to work through his people. Yes. That's the way he wants to do it. You know what, when somebody is, is sick, with a debilitating thing that's got them really down, don't just pray for God to encourage them. Encourage them. Be the phone call or the card or the visit or the email or the text or whatever. You know, your way, but, but be it. Because this is what he has called us to do. He has called us to be his body. And he has promised that he will work through us. You know, sometimes uh, we let our own inadequacy stop us. But I want to tell you that often God uses you in the greatest ways when you do stuff that for you might naturally be difficult or you might not feel like you're up for it or up to it. You all do not know this about me, but um, when I was in high school, I was a star student in all the advanced classes, lots of A's, all that great stuff. And I had a class where you had to get up in front and give your talk. I took a zero. You know why I took a zero? It hurt me to take a zero. It messed up my GPA. I was not going to get a 4.0 because I hated with a passion to have to stand up and talk in front of me. Look at me. Sometimes, sometimes God gets you to do stuff, you know. <laughs> you, you know, you might look at some people and say, now, that person, they're natural. They're just so comfortable and they can just, they can just do that. They're just naturally good at that. But sometimes God asks you to do something you're not naturally good at. <laughs> Okay, and you know what you know? You know that you're totally dependent on him. And, and you know that it's not about you. You know, when Gideon got called, <laughs> God wanted to, to do this big battle. He was called to be a general. Gideon was a little timid guy, and when the angel came up to him and spoke to him, about mighty man of valor, Gideon was like, Mary, you ain't talking to me. <laughs> right? And, and then God sorted out the army and all this stuff. Why did he do all of that? I'm telling you, God said it's so that people will know that it was about him, God, not about the great general that was just oh so courageous and oh so smart in his tactics, or the great army that was oh so vast. They had their victory because they obeyed God, did what God told them to, and God came through and gave them victory. Okay? And, and God was setting that up as an example for us. So I want to tell you, don't let your inadequacies get in the way. Don't let the sins you have struggled with get away because God doesn't wait until you're perfect to use you. <laughs> Submit those things to the Lord. Ask him to help you get rid of them, and he will. Yes. But don't wait. He created and designed you for what he wants to do through you, and he wants to work through you right now. Yes. So don't wait. And discover, discover, how God may use you to bless other lives and bring the needed change because you are an important part of the body of Christ.
ladies who run this show. Um, Matt, would you play that last video? 